Hello, my sweet children of God. So nice to be back with you again. Happy New Year. Well, the last couple of weeks, starting with Christmas when we celebrated Jesus' birthday, and then last Sunday with Jesus and the three kings coming to visit him, he was a baby. He was little. Well, in today's gospel, Jesus is all grown up. And why do you think that is? Because the church wants us throughout the year to learn as much about Jesus as we possibly can. So if they strung out him being a baby for weeks and weeks and weeks, we wouldn't learn the re about the rest of his life, would we? So anyway, today Jesus is baptized by John the Baptist. And in the church, in the Catholic church, we encourage babies to be baptized because Jesus wants us to be part of God's family, to be part of his family. And, you know, people will say, well, I can pray by myself and I can pray at home by myself, which is very true. Oh, yes, we can pray. And it's wonderful to pray by yourself. But, you know, Jesus came to form a community, a family. And he wants us to be together, to be part of the family. <clears throat> so, when we baptize infants, we're making infants part of the family sooner as much as possible. Because when we're born, we become part of a family, don't we? Now, Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. And I'm going to tell you the story in two ways today. I'm going to read it from the Bible, and then I'm going to read it in a different way from a book called the Storybook Bible, which we've heard before. So let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. So John appeared in the desert, baptizing and preaching. Turn away from your sins and be baptized, he told the people, and God will forgive your sins. Many people from the province of Judea and the city of Jerusalem went out to hear John. They confessed their sins, and he baptized them in the river Jordan. John wore clothes made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. He announced to the people, the man who will come after me is much greater than I am. I am not good enough to even bend down and untie his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Not long afterward, Jesus came from Nazareth in the province of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. As soon as he came up out of the water, he saw heaven open and the spirit coming down on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my own dear son. I am pleased with you. At once, the spirit made him go into the desert. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we heard Jesus now is baptized. And I'm going to read the story in a different way in a few minutes. So here is Jesus being baptized by John the Baptist. And John is telling the people, I'm not the Messiah. I'm not the one that God promised. But the one coming after me is greater than I am. And he's the one. And Jesus was baptized by John. And then the heavens opened, and a dove was seen, and a voice was heard. This is my son, the beloved, and I'm well pleased with him. So remember this in your minds when I read the other story. So this is the same story, but reading it from the Jesus Storybook Bible. Okay, so it's the same thing but just a different wording a little bit, so that maybe you'll understand it a little bit better. One day, John was baptizing people in the Jordan River. As usual, when he looked up and saw a man walking down the water's edge. 
God spoke quietly to John. This is the one. John's heart leapt. This was the moment he'd been waiting for all his life. Look, John said, as Jesus came down into the water. But his voice came out as a whisper. He couldn't make it any louder. It was all he could do to even speak. The Lamb of God, God's best Lamb, who takes away the sins of the whole world. Will you baptize me too? Jesus asked. Who am I? John asked. To baptize you. It's what God wants me to do, Jesus said. So John baptized Jesus. Suddenly, it was as if someone had drawn back curtains in a dark room, as if heaven itself had opened, because a beautiful light broke through the clouds and shone down on Jesus, bathing him in gold. Beads of water glittered and sparkled like tiny diamonds in his hair. A white dove flew down and gently rested on Jesus, and a voice came down from heaven. It was clear and strong and loud so everyone could hear. This is my own son, and I love him. I am very pleased with him, God said. Listen to him. Heaven had broken through. The great rescue had begun. Um, we'll hear about the rescues as we go along. And what is that rescue? Jesus rescuing us from our sins and for heaven. So that when we are old and, and we die, we have to go home to God in heaven. So that's what he's telling us to do. So baptism. Well, as I said, it brings us into God's family. You know, some people will say, well, I, 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 I'll let the kids decide for themselves. Which, okay. But, you know, parents teach us to speak the language that they want us to speak. To They teach us to talk. They teach us to walk. They teach us uh, what clothes to wear, what foods to eat. They teach us all of those things because they want us to be like them. And they want us to grow up to be um, our own person. Well, that's what God wants too. And he like, wants us to be in part of his family as soon as possible. But you know, you can be baptized at any age, whether you're 20 or 7 or 30 or 80. You can be baptized if that's what you want. But when you're older... You just, you have to take instructions. You have to take lessons, just like going to school for a little while. So you can understand what belonging to God's family is all about. But you know that. So, what about baptism? As I said, baptism welcomes us into God's family. And you know, when you come to church with your parents, you don't remember this because you were teeny little babies. Anyway... God, the, uh, the priest or the deacon, whoever is performing the baptism, will ask your parents, well, what name do you give your child? Because that's important. Because you become God, part of the family, and everybody knows your name. So what name do you give your child? And then he'll ask the godparents, are they ready to help your parents bring you up in the faith? And of course, everyone says yes. And hopefully that's what happens after, because we make promises. Anyway, after that, the first symbol, the first sign that the priest or the deacon will make is the sign of the cross on your forehead. He's claiming you for Christ, because that's our sign as Christians. We are Christians, and the sign of the cross is our symbol. And then he'll ask the parents and the godparents to do the same thing. They're welcoming you and into God's family, too, with the sign of the cross. There's several symbols, and we won't do them all today. But when you come into church, when it's not COVID times, of course, and we bless ourselves with holy water, and we say, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Do you know why we do that? It's to remind us of our baptism. When I come into church and I put my finger into the holy water and I bless myself, ah, oh, thank you, God. Thank you, 
Jesus for my baptism. I'm part of your family. I'm so excited. Isn't that a wonderful thing? You know, we have so many people will say, well, why do we have to do that? Why do we stand? Why do we sit? Why do we do this? Well, you know, if we look at it and think about it, all of those symbols really mean something. It's supposed to help us to understand and think, how can I love God more? So water, water can bring life and it can bring death. And in baptism, it's bringing life and death, death to the old ways of sin and new life in Christ. Okay, you say, well, as a baby, how do babies have sin? Well, it's because of Adam and Eve and their sin. Remember, God gave them everything they could possibly want. He gave them a beautiful place to live. And he asked them just one thing. Don't touch the tree in the middle of the garden, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But what happened? We know the story. The serpent, the snake, the devil came and tempted Eve and said, Oh, look at this juicy piece of fruit. Can't you take a bite? God doesn't want you to do that because you'll be like him. Well, of course, he must have been very convincing, that devil. And Eve fell for it. And she took the bite. And she brought it to Adam. And of course, then, because they didn't listen to God, he only asked them one thing. He put them out of the garden. And so they lost all of that. And they couldn't pass all that beauty down to us. But God said, well, you did wrong, but I'm going to send someone who will get all this back, and that's Jesus. So water, death to the old sin of Adam and Eve, original sin, because that was the first one, and new life in Jesus. So death to life and beautiful life. Then there's oils, and I won't go into that right now. But the next, after the oils, because there's two, and one of them, Holy Chrism, you'll receive that at baptism, and then you receive it at confirmation. And that brings the Holy Spirit to us in this very special way. Then you receive a little white garment now at St. Peter's. It's like a stole. And that means, okay, I'm welcome into a new family. I'm a new child of God. So I have to have new clothes. It represents being free from sin and very pure and innocent. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we stayed that way all our lives? But we make mistakes, don't we? And we do stupid things sometimes. Then after that, there's a candle. And it's lit from the great big candle called the Paschal Candle. And when we get to Easter, we'll see all that and talk about all that. But your godparents will receive that light from the Paschal Candle. It's like receiving the light of Christ. And we're to carry that light of Christ, that light of faith, out into the world as we live our lives. So that everybody knows that how we live our lives. We're God's children. We're Christians. That's a lot for us to take in today, huh? But anyway, that's our gospel for this weekend. Jesus all grown up now and being baptized. So maybe we can ask your parents about your baptism. And maybe they can tell you all about it. And wouldn't it be nice to remember the day of your baptism? be a wonderful thing to celebrate that day and I was baptized so long ago and I was going to bring a picture but I had a hard time finding it I put it away somewhere and I don't have a picture of myself being in church but I have a picture of my grandmother holding me all dressed up in my uh, baptism um, 
clothes, my baptism outfit. I was so little, but anyway, that's a long, long, long time ago. And I, they wouldn't have allowed cameras in church in those days, so I don't have pictures in church. But later on, confirmation, I have pictures because we could we had cameras for different things. Anyway, that's enough of me for today. But think about your baptism and think about during COVID times, I know it's more difficult, but I know, I know, I'm sure you're continuing to say your prayers, you're continuing to try to do what God wants us to do, like being kind and being compassionate, being helpful at home, trying to help your moms and your dads or your grandmas and grandpas and help them if they need help, especially if they're in your home, if you're all together, and also in school. I know it's difficult to be in school with just a few friends, or if you're doing virtual learning through the computer, I know that must be very difficult for you. It's just like me talking to you now. Do you know how many times I start this again and again and again because I think, oh, I made a mistake or my mouth got mixed up and I stumbled with words. But anyway, just to let you know, as you can see the crucifix up in the wall way up there, that Jesus loves you and never forget it. Never, never forget that you're part of a family. You're part of our family here at St. Peter's. And we miss you terribly when we can't be together because of this silly COVID. And I know you're taking care. You're washing your hands. You're wearing your masks outside. And when you're with people that you don't know, you're wearing your masks. And we're trying to keep safe because we want to be all together again very, very soon. Now, let's close with a prayer. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear God, thank you for giving us Jesus. He's your Son, and you sent him to us to help us make the world a better place. He's in our hearts and in our minds. You gave us baptism so that we can become part of your family. We are children of you. We are your children. We are adopted sons and daughters of you. We want to do what pleases you, so please help us. Send your Holy Spirit upon us like you sent him on Jesus to help us to understand. Give us the wisdom and the knowledge of what we need to be part of your light and to do your will. Please keep everybody safe, Father. We love you. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Until next time, boys and girls, we'll see you then. Love you. Hugs and prayers. And stay awake.